Λοιπόν, η πρώτη ομάδα είναι η Trustwise, να είναι λίγο μπροστά. Τι είναι Trustwise. The second team, the second team is San Vista. The third is Fastway. Fourth is Bruno. Then nice to see. So uh, for me, a round of applause today. And well, it, it, it exceeded my expectations. So you are a winner, at least uh, for myself. And I'll make sure that it, it shows in the end of the time. Um, special thanks to the participating teams, uh, to all the volunteers, mentors, uh, the crowd policy. Uh, team that they were here uh, all the weekends, uh, KPMG mentors, and any other uh, non KPMG mentors that, uh, that was uh, pleased to meet. Uh, <laughs> that was, it was amazing. Special thanks to the supporting industry catalyst uh, uh, <coughs> time, GIC. They were here all the weekend providing insights into their business model. So, again, a uh, very big thanks to them. Thank you very much. I think uh, we began with uh, 10 teams, uh, seven uh, in the process did not manage to uh, complete the relevant steps. We are seven, but seven high quality, uh, high caliber uh, uh, MVPs at the end. Uh, as I understand, all theoretically or practically, they won a competition <laughs> in the previous uh, uh, few years. So, hope they are winners uh, today as well. Um, questions. Ten minutes each team. And five minutes questions. Five minutes questions. All right. We hope to finalize by nine o'clock so that we have a couple of drinks. Magrati, here is a stepping stone for the acceleration program. Yes. So, the, the main challenge uh, after, after the hackathon is how to integrate these <coughs> extraordinary results. Uh, at the business and at the technology level with uh, our partners. And this is a this direction. Is a commitment, uh, this is a commitment that we got, hopefully, from the industry catalyst. So, I mean, 
hope everyone will walk the talk, both from the participating <coughs> teams. I'm just raising that some, sometimes, you know, participating teams, they come so far, but then something goes off. <coughs> so again, everyone, uh, let's join forces and uh, provide uh, valuable uh, results for the industry. So, uh, thank you very much. Good luck to all participating teams. Thank you. <coughs> so, hello, everybody. Does this thing work? Uh, no, it's true. <coughs> okay, thank you. So, hello, everybody. Uh, this is Trustwise, and we are presenting you our Trustwise Insurance Network. So. On this hackathon, uh, on this hackathon, our team is represented only by two members. So it's Nick. Uh, he was doing the UI part, and I'm Vlad. I was doing the smart contract, so basically the backend part. Oops. So it's not a secret that the insurance industry is currently under disruption, under huge disruption, and the blockchain technologies play a significant role in this process. They bring decentralization, immutability, 100% trustless and deterministic smart contracts, which could help improve the insured tech business sector by solving issues such as double claims, reducing the time spent on the disputes, and eventually getting rid of them. So we decided to dive into the healthcare area on this hackathon where we wanted to solve the issue of double claims. The double claim uh, is considered as a fraud and we've done a research for, uh, for the amount of damage the fraud causes to insurers where we found out that it accounts actually at least 5 to 10% of claim costs in the US uh, for, for the US and Canadian insurers. And moreover, the fraud detection before the claim payout is, uh, uh, is mentioned as a main fraud fighting uh, priority by, uh, by most insurers. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the insurance companies predict an increase in fraud uh, by policyholders, which is uh, which is obvious, for instance, that GDPR uh, makes it extremely hard to operate with the personal data. And the blockchain technology helps to solve those problems in the way that any identifiable, identifiable data are kept off-chain, while the hashed key uh, values can be stored on-chain. In addition to that, the client decides with whom he wants to share the, uh, his personal data. We uh, took the health insurance as an example for our presentation, uh, covering some specific disease. And the main idea here is that the insurance agreement is done by trustless smart contract, which is put on blockchain and uh, which deterministically decides uh, which cases are going to be paid out and which are not. Uh, so when the client comes to the doctor, the doctor issues the uh, the doctor issues the bill, which is put on chain and contains uh, data such as amount to pay, uh, hashtag identification of the patient and uh, his diagnosis. And now the payment can be completed by using the insurance smart contract, which will check if the reason is in, uh, which is in the diagnosis is in the list of the coverable ones. And yeah. Uh, by insurers. If it is, then the payment uh, will be fulfilled and money uh, will be transferred from the insurer account to the, to the doctor's account. If it is not, then the client should fulfill it by him or herself. Uh, once the bill uh, has been paid, uh, it cannot be repaid again because the state uh, is stored on the blockchain. Uh, we see future actually of our idea as a joint technology with the biometrical smart devices, 
which are analyzed into biometrical data and could trigger some events uh, on chain without revealing the user health data, which is uh, considered as a very sensitive data. And the device, uh, the smart device, has a unique private key that cannot be read uh, without the destroying the device in the process. And the set of events can be specified by the insurance contract, and it could be the proof of performing an exercise, for example, or even in some cases, uh, the diagnosis can be set based on the biometrical data. In the first case, the client gets the uh, uh, some discounts for doing these uh, ex exercises, and in the second case, uh, some vouchers uh, can be can be issued for buying some medical. Uh, the smart contract technology can be also very helpful when ensure that whether the expensive treatment was necessary or not. And in such a case, the additional analysis can be can be requested by insurer uh, by smart contract directly. And the analysis results are sent to the smart contract back, and based on their parameters, the claim approval or rejection decision is made on chip automatically, with no need of the for third party arbiter. So we see us as the providers of permission blockchains for the insurance industry, which are managed by the consortium. Uh, consisting of insurance companies and regulators. According to the medical loss ratio rules, which specify that individual and small group carriers uh, must spend at least 80% of their premiums on medical expenses, and in some uh, large group plans, the requirement is 85%. If we assume that from 85%, uh, the fraud is 4%, plus 1%, is uh, savings on the fraud detection. The carriers can uh, the carriers can save up to five percent of their premium, and the trust wise gets one point twenty five percent out of it uh, from it, and uh, zero point five percent goes to the consortium and benefitors, and these are also the insurance companies. So in the end, the insurers save up to the three point twenty five percent. So now. I'm gonna give <laughs> so he's gonna be doing some demo show. Okay. 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 What we have here is just the front end of our application. We don't really use the back end. We just use uh, the blockchain. Uh, so the blockchain in this case would be our back end, the smart contract that we wrote. So let's go ahead and see the point of view of the insurer. In this case, we have to select what was covered, and this is just uh, a small part of what we could offer here. So the maximum payout could be any value, and for the client, can select from a list on Friday at 10 a.m. So after I submit. From the point of view on the insuring, if you want to see. Still have some problems, but we already have some data already, so I can show you those kind of data. We have here some previous settlements that are now done. So we, we have, as an example, uh, the, the reason for the settlement that the law court was wrote. We have a reference to the medical record entry. And uh, this already paid, so the amount is zero. And uh, I will also show you the point of view of the doctor when they create a new settlement case. I'm selecting the diagnosis, the settlement, and the client. And the reference could be from this client's uh, medical record. Yeah, that's 
about how the existing process works and uh, uh, what is the, the attribution, the, the value that are uh, provided to an existing process or we are creating a new process? The, the, existing, the existing process, which is about to change soon, but anyway, the existing process is as follows. The, the user has to pay for, uh, for their treatment and then they submit, uh, they claim to the insurance company to get the, the reimbursement. Changed by the seed, and uh, people that want to participate in this program can, uh, can pay a fee, and they're eligible to use the, the selection of doctors. And uh, the doctors uh, get paid a standard fee besides of the work they do, uh, so that there's no uh, incentivization for the doctors. Integrated in the future with the Ipers to Ipers traditional information system. <coughs> yes, uh, we we mentioned that we can, uh, according to the biometric data that uh, have been collected, we can issue vouchers for medication automatically. Yeah. Okay. Must they or mother pass away? Hello. 
basically an e-blocker where we connect uh, consumer needs to insurance companies. So far, what we've decided to do is to provide only non-life insurance plans uh, to our platform where we're going to provide the user with uh, discount quotations and we're going to allow them to book their policies online. Uh, how we came up with the ideas, we decided on two, um, two cases and we start doing the sample test, and we realize that information provided to the consumer is not well enough, and the provision of services is kind of outdated. So we decided to solve the problem by taking a traditional uh, process of filling the form to pay it online. We're so implemented an automated, you know, an automated quotation function, so we can get discount quotation from the insurer, from the insurer to the consumer. Also, we we'll provide the user with an ideal decision as to which insurance is most suitable for his needs. We we'll provide some kind of online testers, and we try to make the, our application as ideally compliant as this is a directive that's soon to be implemented in Cyprus, and uh, therefore we we'll allow the user to have a choice as to which uh, policy is the most suitable for his needs. Now let's go and start editing the application. This is our application. We're going to go online, have a look on the, on the type of services we provide on the platform. Here is the non life insurance uh, policy. We're going to give it a demo in the current insurance. So, here we're going to put some information uh, that we're going to be sending later on to the, to the insurance company. Yeah, I know, but it's just comparing. It's So here we're going to put the registration number of the card and we're going to be connected to the phone database. So we can get the standard newspaper of the card. So here we go and start the list of the data. And we're going to put the value of the card so we can get a call from the insurance company. So here what we have is these are the offers we got back from the software that we're going to give to the current user. So far we have five match that we index them with a certain set of criteria based on based on what the insurer or uh, the user used. So the first couple of them, uh, have the first three of them have 96% compatibility, and the rest and a couple of them have a bit less. So if we choose any time, we can see that based on these five categories that we index the needs of the user, we have the scoring, and uh, then we provide the user with all the policies provided by this specific uh, policy. We, we provide key benefits as to what this insurance is providing, and we give some extra benefits that this index index even more because we give some extra benefits as to what the user requires. We provide them with to download the policy, discount quotation, discount quotation uh, from the API of the insurer or from the policy that the insurer gives to us, and we allow the user to purchase now. If we click on the purchase now, just for demonstration, uh, we're going to redirect them to the public <coughs> API. And it's going to be directly in front of the FBI of the case we took. So, uh, if you can see, we have the quoted and pending type of insurers. Uh, uh, this one, uh, it does not match 100% with the compatibility of the user. So, this is quite a bit lower than what the other companies uh, indexate. So if we go now to the other one, you can see now you realize this is pending. This is because of a couple of scenarios. First of all, is maybe this uh, scenario of the car is very expensive, and the insurer does not want to uh, give that uh, give that quotation online unless he has certain extra parameters. 
So we give the, our user the option that is going to be into this range, and then we, we want to contact the insurer so the insurer can give back a specific uh, transaction later on. Uh, so now what else we have in the platform is we go to my Instagram account. Uh, here we have uh, already purchased uh, insurance. We have a car insurance from any time and the product insurance from GAP. Uh, we, here we have the date that it was actually issued on, the expiration of the new function. We also have action that to how to cancel the insurance, have the details, change the policy premium, and so on. Uh, we have some profiles here. Uh, this is how it's going to be looking like when you request uh, uh, car insurance. You're going to go into this uh, request. You're going to have all your offers, and you can go in and choose. Uh, you can go back to the previous uh, page. We also have basic profiling, change password, and other functions for the user. Now, let's go back to the presentation and we discuss with the detail. <coughs> so, uh, when we're developing the product, we thought as to the big picture rather than individual contacts. Basically, what's happening right now, everyone's competing with uh, each other. And the uh, sector as technology is being developed is uh, the need to start thinking bigger as to the sector as a whole. So what we realize again is the fact that the information uh, to the client is not enough in the existing contact, and you have to and, and the, there is a need to increase uh, the information for the user. Also, the technology about the purchasing of the products and uh, as to the option they have to use the user card to have an educated. Uh, as to which thing, which policy is going to buy, is rather limited. So the question that is ours should be able to provide the user with more information and more options to buy and choose insurance. Uh, our approach to the market as for this product is we're going to attack each uh, all the companies, either agencies or the companies themselves. We are going to think that as of the weekend, which we spoke with several companies, they are interested to, to have everyone decide they are better. And uh, we're also going to focus on the online insurance policies as to the issue of index them and uh, be able to make the contact online. Also, we're going to formulate uh, by doing so, we can this more easily index the data and we can also provide notification to the user. Uh, the, the business model we're going to follow is pretty much the industry standard. Uh, the insurance company issues a policy, the broker issues a commission, and then the, the policy is sold to the client. We also have a commission-based uh, component that can be charged for a uh, percentage, and the profit share is huge. Our approach as to the product is going to be, uh, we're going to go both the direct commission-based as to the volume of policy process through our platform and profit share. As of today, that's what we came up with. Thank you very much. Let's have a <laughs>
why why would you have Hassan or some other pilots overcome to this house? with them because they would provide better uh, flight control lines. Uh, the other thing I think you should uh, focus on is the micro policies um, send them on the, on the website. So again, you need to work with the uh, incumbents on that. Now, in terms of the questions, um, can you please expand the I like the fact of the score, but I can't tell how do you get the financial security piece of Okay. It's the first two are okay. The first two is the best deal financial security how to model the I don't know exactly what you said, but what we thought about doing was if the company has uh, a well proven financial stability as a minor agent, we're going to index the deal that we like someone that that has been uh, issued cases against them or something like this. That was the first project, it might not be realistic, but we're considering something, some sort of the stability of the of or of the company itself. Uh, each of you uh, is going to be pretty much queuing from the user, existing user. If uh, I, I build a specific company, I was more like, there was more than service, they have excellent customer service, and so on and so on, we're going to give them uh, some value there as to which one is going to be uh, Customer satisfaction is just going to be the key type of thing that if I'm happy with this company, I give them everything. If this company, I'm not happy with the company, I'm going to give them too. Depending on the or depending on exactly the business plan, the business model, and the whole implementation, this should be actually uh, something like this in the future. So you will be soliciting feedback from the users? Uh, we, we, we had it as an option. We would have it as an option <coughs> if our users feedback for us, depending on how they are with the 
Is Hi everyone, we're Pathway, and our vision is to save money, time, and lives. Insurance companies know everything about their customer, but their customer is only half of the story. Variable factors are the other half. Variable factors are factors that can change at any time throughout the day. For example, it doesn't matter how much of a good driver you are, if there's a thunderstorm, or if you're on a very dangerous road, or if there's a lot of traffic, the chance of you getting into an accident increases. Unfortunately, at this time, insurance companies don't take these factors into account. So that's why we created Payflow. So how do, how do we help you? Firstly, we collect data such as where in which roads historical, data, historical accidents come from. So we all know that in larger roads, there may be more lanes, but there's still a higher chance of accidents. So, how do we do this? We have dummy data because we couldn't find any real data to support this. But we can assume that insurance companies have such data because they're the ones that <laughs> they're the ones that go to accidents and know where accidents occur. So if they want to, they can have this data. <laughs> so what do we do with that? We produce a weighted representation of amounts, which means we collect, we connect each node, which is a connection of two roads, with a weight. A weight <coughs> comes from our risk assessment that calculates how risky it is to be in that road. So a road that is of high risk will have a higher weight and will thus be avoided in our navigation later. And most importantly, we incentivize and inform people to take the safest possible path through the approach of gamification. Our users collect points when they go through the safest path, which the points can be used to get discounts on their insurance premiums. So, how do we calculate this? Andreas, <coughs> before I mentioned weather, so we use the Open Weather API to get three types of weather, high severity, medium, and low severity. Low severity will be things like drizzle, medium severity will be rain or low visibility, and high severity will be thunderstorms, snow, things like that. Maybe a tornado. So we use that, and depending on the severity of the weather conditions, we get a risk from that. Then we use the Google Maps API for live traffic data, and we use that because when there's higher traffic, there's higher chance of getting into an accident. So we get the traffic for each road that is in your journey and calculate the risk also based on that. And of course, as we mentioned before, the historical data from previous accidents. At the moment, we, com we join these three components together with a simple formula, but in the future, this can be implemented using a machine learning algorithm to find a more effective solution. So, with the knowledge of 
which roads are most dangerous, we can be safer by avoiding them. This can be done by showing to the user which are the safest roads to follow and to force them to go there. In order to do that, we offer the points, as I mentioned before, which can be redeemed for discounts. And the safer the route, the more the points. So a driver that prefers to not go out when it's raining and always follows the safest route, even if it's going to take him an extra five minutes to go to work, will get more points than someone who goes out when it's when there's a volcano erupting <laughs> and <laughs> everyone is stopped essentially in the road. So how do we do this? Here we have a map. <coughs> the red dots you can see here are previous accidents which have which have taken place in that area. So, when we choose these two points as our source and destination, we can see that even though the safest path is a bit longer, it's still going to prefer that over the alternative, which is even though shorter, which is more dangerous because more accidents have occurred in that area. So, we can see that live. If we go to that road, which is here, and we choose this here, the safest road is chosen, and the quickest road is pre presented as an alternative. Now, here's a bigger example that you can see that the safest road is a lot longer. It's two kilometers and the other one is 1.2 kilometers. But, but because there have been more accidents in that road, we prefer to go from the bigger road that has a lower chance of an, of an accident. So if we continue, we can see a rat. We have the same interface. You can choose any two points as a source and a destination. We choose, let's say, KPMG Cyprus as a source, and we want to go to Limassol. And I think that's your first one. I can almost see it. So, for some reason, it doesn't show a route right now, but we can see our current score is, uh, which is a bit delayed. So our score is 542 points, and we have another 458 points for the next reward. So if we do the rewards, it's 2% on the premium for 500 points, 5% 5 for 1,000 points, 10% for 1,500 points, and 50% if you manage to collect 10,000 points. So if we go back to the presentation. Uh, and this will be basically implemented as part of an insurance company's mobile application. So for example, DriveSafe, which I'm sure many of you know, uh, can use this as an extension. Um, to their services. Uh, it doesn't have a, a, a direct revenue model per se, so it won't be charging anyone, but what it will be doing is providing customer acquisition and customer retention. So customers will be incentivized to remain within your firm because they're collecting points now and they sort of feel that, those, that investment that they've made and they want to keep growing that investment. Um, and uh, basically, 
in a, what we will provide is precise risk forecasting by looking at the user's routes, uh, which will lead to more accurate pricing, which will attract eventually safe drivers, because the more accurate pricing for the safe drivers will be a cheaper rate than what they already have. And best of all, Pathway is a win-win for safe drivers, smart insurers, and the uninsured. Safe drivers win because they become happier customers. Safe drivers are insured at cheaper rates due to more precise risk estimates. Drivers are also kept off dangerous roads, and that makes them safer. Smart insurers also win because they have more customers now. Cheaper rates than safe drive, uh, cheaper rates for safe drivers bring in more of them as customers, and that leads to an increased amount of revenue and customer retention. Customers on the platform who collect points will feel invested in their score, which makes them hesitant to switch insurers. And the uninsured also win. And this is because 85% uh, of the uninsured claim that they're uninsured because of uh, the cost of insurance. But however, if the price, if they knew that the price could go down as long as they kept driving in a safe manner and uh, through safe routes, then they would be more, con they would feel more confident in purchasing insurance, especially with a firm that implements it. So not only are there less uninsured people, and not only do you have more customers, but your customers are happier, safer, and more likely to stay within your firm. Thank you. Without uh, our new functionality to drive safe after. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, to be honest, fantastic idea, no question, to be, to be honest. I have to admit something about the, the availability of data. Okay. Um, insurance company do not exchange data. That, that's, that's a problem. Um, about claim history, for example, if I want to, to find the claim history of a customer, I have to ask him to give me uh, the name of the previous insurer, and then by fax uh, sending uh, a request to the previous insurance company in order to get the claim history uh, until now. Uh, the association of insurance companies is going to uh, build a database with all the claims, and I think that in two, three years time from now, you will have this uh, data. Until then, I don't, uh, honestly, I don't know where are you going to find this data, but you, your idea is very good. Congratulations. Um, so, a question on where we can find this data. Uh, does the, out of curiosity, does the police record where it actually happened? Actually, yes. Yes, yes, but I'm not sure that. Uh, it's not only the accident, it's only the accident that uh, has injuries. Um, so it's not the whole set of data. And police is another organization that it's not easy to share data. I have to be more optimistic. The question is how much data do you need to correlate? So I think there are the, the likes of GIG that have newfangled data, probably they can uh, deliver uh, the <coughs> data. You need to make the analysis and the relevant amount of correlation. Uh, so I think you are on the, on the right path. So you don't need a lot of data, you don't need the, definitely the, the, the insurance to be faster. I think with, uh, with more uh, data you can provide the relevant correlation to the premise. Actually, in the map, even in an area where there has been one accident, it will still prefer to not go through that area at all if the distance difference is small enough. So even like few data is better than no data at all. There is a theoretical argument that uh, before, uh, obviously I will be discussing now, which can be part of the, uh, the, the next step. Uh, also, let me add that historical data is not the only data we're collecting. So we're also collecting traffic data and weather data. But yeah, historical data is very important. So there would be an, a need to be a way of securing it. Uh, uh, is it very good? Uh, no question. 
not just to comment when you come to the to be with the idea that there is there one is the another factor is not just an observation or from the act to the end, so also time. But we need to look at how and not so uh, that thing that uh, maybe uh, proposing a longest route to a greater road, in fact in reality I believe in insurance it increases exposure. And that is a uh, addicting factor to when they calculate that the number of aggregate addicts. So maybe they are increasing some power as there. Yes. Uh, so our algorithm for calculating the paper system, it definitely does need refinement in terms of uh, how much is how much extra distance is too much extra distance. Uh, in order to reduce the exposure that I have mentioned, we can suggest different safe routes for each user. So it's more balanced throughout the road network. And also about the times. We actually indirectly also right now have time because of the live traffic. So Google Maps has live traffic in Cyprus and it can see in which roads there have there is more traffic. So <coughs> at times where there's higher traffic, there's higher chance of an accident. Uh, but uh, the thing with uh, with our application is basically that it's very modular, so you can easily add new factors, uh, new variable factors that we talked about earlier. And so time could theoretically be added uh, into it if we have data on time of accidents before. Hey, actually, very good job, guys. Uh, about data, uh, probably there could be some data educators. Uh, I don't know the chances that there are. I don't know if they're uh, another source is probably the part of the data. Because there's another idea you will see later where you can report the car accidents and you can share the geolocation location of the accident. So the two ideas can be combined. Uh, and I'd like also to mention that the guys are for the future they're thinking to add to their algorithm the uh, road condition, like a car road, uh, and so on. And the difficulty of it, maybe climbing up on the map and not to see this. In reality, it's really more dangerous. Yes, it will make, uh, because you know, you know, it's right safe. I don't know if there is a sort of a scoring for the acceleration. Maybe there are some steep acceleration to accelerate to, to avoid an accident. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're trying to penalize it. We're trying to avoid accident. That's one thing we were considering to add, uh, and we wanted to add but we basically didn't have time. And the other thing was a leaderboard uh, where you could compare your points with your friend's points. And this way, sort of, kind of creates this competitive culture of, oh, I want to surpass my friend, uh, so I'll get more points anyway, and get the safer route. The backend for that is available, but we don't have time to, to implement it in our app. But the button is ready. Any more questions? Uh, just a comment. Um, in, in terms of incentives uh, to use the safest route, maybe it would be good to have like a, a relevant uh, a payoff, like uh, approaching a gas company and giving some discount <coughs> just to count the, the extra route or the coverage. Yeah. Maybe that would make sense. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to ensure that it pairs up with this path. Very good uh, idea. Maybe uh, what you could also think about would be uh, getting the police on board because uh, they are driving uh, to reduce the number of accidents. So they have a lot of information. And uh, if, you, uh, if you actually develop this in the future, then they may be contributing information to pieces. Assuming that the, the person, assuming that the one who participates in this, the person driving, uh, can uh, enable and disable the app when they are driving safe and uh, when the road can be disabled. Yeah. So uh, 
should consider um, what to do about that. Yeah. So one thing our app is doing, it doesn't penalize uh, taking the fastest route. It only incentivizes taking the, sa the, the safest route. So if a volcano eruption, you want to drive outside, uh, you can even turn our, our, our app on, and it'll be fine. We won't take off any points. So what I mean is, if I'm not going to take the safest route, I will disable the app so that I don't get penalized. And I only, you know, assuming I'm driving, I don't know, five hours uh, a day, I will only use the app two hours a day when I'm driving safe. And uh, on a Saturday night, three o'clock, when I'm leaving the club, I will disable the app. Uh, our app does not penalize um, for taking the fastest route. It only incentivizes taking the safest route. Are you using our app or drive safe app? No. And for your